<laughs> I swear to y'all, if it is not one daggum thing, it is another at the treehouse. The squirrel has figured out how to chew through the top of my feeder. Uh, I already moved the previous feeder. There's been two squirrels that have been coming in. Uh, they scrape out all the feed out of my bird feeder. Then that attracts the hogs to come in. And it's just been this continuous cycle and I'm not always here to take care of the problem, but I am today. This sucker keeps popping out of the hole that's on top of the corn feeder. Goes in there, dives down, gets little golden nuggets, comes back on top, and then he starts chewing them. Well, guess what? I got the Air Force air gun in here. I'm going to take this other one out and I've got a buttermilk recipe. I'm gonna put this sucker in because I am tired of your squirreliness, sir. Ma'am, not really sure what you are, didn't matter. You're about to be delicious nuggets. Much better than the last one, super chewy. We have to sneak upstairs, covertly get in position, and then take the squirrel out, put him in some grease. My shooting lanes directly at the feeder are pretty obstructed at the top level right now. There's a lot of trees in the way. The foliage has come through strong. We've also got this front that's coming in and I'm hoping that's gonna get the squirrel back. I already went out there and I had to put a new uh, lid on top of this thing. So let me show you what the squirrel did to the old lid. So that is what a squirrel will do to a plastic lid if it wants to get inside a corn feeder bad enough. They can also do this to your house, and they have in some areas of the treehouse. Uh, these guys, some may think that they are just cute, cuddly little animals. Well, what if they did that to your face? They're not only a nuisance, they can be a home hazard. Also, we have a wasp issue right here. Uh, we're about to just take the old wasp shot and get that guy. Actually, you know, you know what it is a risky move, but I found to be pretty effective. You just take that bill out hat and you just whoosh, smoke it. See if I could do this with one hand and hopefully not get stung. Man, it's a tight quarter. Oh man, I missed. Oh man, I missed again. Oh shoot, I can't get in there. Oh yeah, gotcha boy. It's the next day right now, y'all. We had thunderstorms come in. It got super nasty. All the animals went and hid. But right now, guess who's back? Guess who's back? All I gotta do is just sit down here in my little cave and old squirrels start to come out. So, um, same kind of conditions, overcast. Might rain this afternoon, but the squirrel is literally on the feeder right now. We got a squirrel. Okay. He appears to be, oh yeah, striking distance. It's all the corn that I set out away from the feeder. Load up the Air Force here. There we go. Oh, he's on top of the feeder. He's on top of the other feeder. Let's see if I can sneak out here very carefully. So, squirrel was right here, literally just hanging on this feeder. And then as you can see, 
hog tracks tracks the hogs because they they uh, they literally just scrape off all the feed from that and then wha-bam another perfect shot on that squirrel that's so sad <laughs> you have to close your eyes it's a good thing we got this one it's not gonna get into our house now me and Steph have uh, definitely had our share of house problems lately um, we found a rat in our AC unit which was pretty bad. I don't even think we put that in on the Lake Life family channel, but anyways, uh, the critters are real here, y'all. And we had an inspector out yesterday and uh, he said, do you have squirrels that get up in here? I said, I try to take care of them. And he said, good, you need to. Another perfect shot with the Air Force air rifle. That thing is just a squirrel assassinator. The last recipe, I mean, OSG. Yeah. I don't know if I'll yeah, try yeah, I, I think we probably backed her off eating squirrels, but uh, I heard about a buttermilk recipe. Actually, uh, one of the guys up at uh, Air Force Air Rifles, when I went to visit them the other day, they were they were saying like, man, that, that recipe you did with that other squirrel, that, is, that was chewy. You need to try buttermilk frying them, which is a lot similar to what my grandma used to do. Uh, when I used to go visit visit them on their farm and it was I remember it being much better so that's what we're gonna do is actually Steph's about to go to the grocery store anyways so can you pick up some buttermilk I will pick you up some buttermilk but I won't promise I'm gonna try this okay one. I am proud of you though for cleaning up I feel like you're cleaning up the yard one hey two shots one squirrel at two a two squirrels I'm not messing around okay so while Steph is running to the store to get the buttermilk and a little bit of oil so we can fry them up mm. we already have biscuits and deer sausage gravy this morning, which would have been perfect to go with this, but I didn't know that old Mr. Squirrel was gonna come out again. Last video where I cleaned one of these squirrels, I tried to cut the squirrel in two and then pull it apart. I didn't do a good job, hair got everywhere. Uh, I'm gonna try to do a much better job on this one and I'm gonna try to use the tail method. First step skin is you need a real sharp knife and this is the one I'm gonna be carrying on my hunt while I'm in New Zealand because it's really small, light, uh, and it's daggum sharp and it's just easy to easy to get in there. I'm gonna lift the squirrel's tail up, I'm gonna cut it around the anus and I'm gonna cut into the tail bone but not all the way through the tail. Bending the tail down like that gives you a little leverage off the off the bat. Okay. In between the joint, so I'm almost through that tail now. There we go. Made that first part of the cut tail is disconnected as far as the bone goes and now with this method you should be able to hold the feet and you need a lot of leverage and pull upward i just pulled a bunch of hair off the tails basically what happened there uh, okay it is somewhat working here not as clean as i'd like it to be but it's working okay there we go so from pulling from the tail up, from here, I can still pull up. I can pull on those back legs. And I can just use my fingers to get those little arms out. You just pull with your index finger right there and then you can expose those little joints and just cut through those. And then we'll just grab them right here. And we'll pull on the opposite side. Wow, okay, this is much, much easier this way. There we go. So I have hair all over it, screwed up that part, but the skin's exposed. All I gotta do is cut the joints right here and then spray off the hair and we're good. Quite honestly, the last time I did this probably took me like 45 minutes. Uh, this method right here is taking uh, like five. So I'm just gonna take my knife, cut right here at the joint. Cut right here at the joint here. Okay, that's done. Like all the hair, um, well, there's a little bit of hair, but not nearly as much mess. And then on the bottom half, same thing with these little arm joints. Oh, chicken's got something. Chicken's got a beetle or something. Pretty excited about it. So there we go. All I gotta do now is, uh, is cut the head off and then cut the entrails out and we will be done. Hey, unless you're in the squirrel, why don't you get back in the yard and go eat some bugs?
my hands like hanging out with me all. Uh, I'm surrounded by women. I got Steph, I got Emmy, I got all the hens here. I, I need, I think it's time to get a dog again, a male dog. Cleaning is done. Much, much easier than the last time I did it and a lot less hair. I've already quartered the squirrel and as soon as OSG gets back, we're gonna get those soaking in some buttermilk and I'll show y'all the rest of this recipe. This is gonna be a lot better than last time, I hope. But anything fried is usually pretty good. Plus, I think this squirrel is younger. It was smaller. Uh, the meat just felt better. <sighs> what do you think, y'all? Aren't you glad you're not going in the grease today? She was getting a little concerned there. Y'all are never going in the grease. Unless y'all can't make some eggs, then we got a problem. Okay, so after cleaning and quartering the squirrel, I put it in some salted ice water inside of a bowl and then I put it inside the refrigerator for a few hours. Now that Steph brought home the buttermilk, I'm going to uh, drain this water out. I'm going to actually pad these dry and then I'm going to replace the salted ice water with buttermilk and let them soak in that till dinner time. This is also one last opportunity to get any at all hairs off the meat. So. OSG won't freak out. Now that we got these beauties quartered and there's a there's one little mid piece in there. Um, I'm, I'm just throwing it in there. But basically arms, arms and legs essentially and then a little bit of mid section. We're using some low fat cultured but how, how come we didn't get the high fat mom? Do you? Well, where is it? Well, you can you have to make it like on demand. So you can use whole whole milk, and then all you have to do is squeeze the lemon. Really, it's just like sour milk is what it is. You asked for. We got so for one. We got one percent. When OSG is explaining how we can make this all natural. Yes. Yeah, so on demand. So Again, we don't have. <laughs> we don't have that. What she's talking about for some reason. But we're gonna use this. We're gonna cover it. It's still pretty thick. I dare you to chug some of that. You dare me? Yeah. I dare you to eat this squirrel. Uh, I'll chug that if you eat some of the squirrel. Nope, not happening. Okay then. This is going back in the refrigerator and we're going to let that just coat and get thick. It is evening time. Our buttermilk has been soaking into the squirrel and now it's time to get, get to the fun part. Get to the grease. Make it golden crispies. Except these aren't fish, y'all. And yes, I do have a crappie jig in my hat. In case y'all were looking at that earlier, uh, I dangle. That's what I do. Sometimes I get lures in my hat. Emmy, you gonna be my helper? Okay, good. First thing we gotta do, y'all, we gotta put some, we gotta make some grease to make our crispies. So I've got some uh, Mazola canola. <laughs> Man, that's some marketing, ain't it? What is in this, honey? It's just straight canola oil. Straight canola. What is canola? I don't even know. It comes from a plant, like a, like a flower. Okay. Well, there it's must, actually must be a bunch of oil. Canadian. All right, well, hey. Canadians sure do know how to kill stuff and cook it. So, here we go. Canola oil, I'm going into a, um, a skillet. Is this warm already? No, just cut on the wrong thing. I'm gonna put that on a little bit over medium heat. I like to call this the reflective pool of of outdoor meat greatness. I'll come up with a better name later. Anyways, we're gonna get this deep enough. We're gonna get our pool deep enough so our our golden crispies can get crispy all over. I've only got a one squirrel, so I hate to use a I hate to use a whole bottle. That's pretty much what's happening. At this point, you're gonna need yourself a Ziploc bag. You also could use a, a bowl, but I'm gonna use the bag method and I'm gonna make a flour spice mixture. That's right, Amy, and it's gonna be spicy. So here's what we're gonna add. We're gonna add just regular flour. We're gonna add the, uh, this is the Cosmo Q uh, SPG, which is basically just salt, pepper, and garlic. And then for a little kick, 
we're going to go with another, uh, this is a Cosmo Q. This guy visited us at the Guggen HQ. He's won many awards for his cooking. And anyway, he sells all sorts of spices. And this is a chicken wing dust. So if you wanted to make hot wings, you would use this. We're kind of doing the same, same sort of thing that you would do to make hot wings. So I'm going to add that for a little kick. The last squirrel basically just kind of skillet cooked it. And uh, it, it was like a piece of rubber, uh, a greasy piece of rubber. Uh, with hair on it, and uh, Steph, you got anything to add to that description? No, that is pretty much right on point. Pretty good. <laughs> it's because of that description that. I'm... Yeah, <laughs> we we topped it with a glaze, like an orange glaze, but it really didn't help the nastiness. It was just bad. It was real bad. It was real bad. Like scared her off from eating squirrel forever. Like it shot out right of now. my mouth. It shot out of her mouth. She uh, she tried to take a bite out of it. It was rubberized and uh, it sprung off. So yeah, anyway, let's get to the final portion. Okay, I'm doing four scoops, four scoops of all all purpose AP flour. We're gonna crack open this wing dust. This is the Nashville hot chicken. One, if y'all are curious, got some cayenne in there for sure. Quarter bag of that, just to give it some kick. Then we're gonna pop off with some. SPG, a bug just flew out of there. See that? <laughs> Literally popped the top and a bug flew out of there. Oh Hope you gosh. had a good time in there. He was partying. Probably smells like garlic. Go with a smattering of that. Includes real Georgia gnats for extra protein. Okay, so we, our bag looks sort of like that. We'll give it a good, a good mixing. We'll mix this up. Mm -hmm. Good thing that wasn't open. And then we're going to do the same thing when we pull these parts of the squirrel out of the uh, buttermilk, which is what we're doing right now. Designating a new area over here. This is my area, honey. All right, you can All have right. that area. Just want to, for take note, OSG is not involved with this one. Okay. Nope, I'm standing back. She is standing back. I'll watch. Woo-wee, man, baby! Do you have, like, chicken? a glass of buttermilk? Have I ever had one? No, why would I? Before I knew that it was Have like you? bitter, I thought it sounds delicious. Watermelon. Well, it sounds delicious until you drink it. Mm -hmm. But the purpose is uh, for the marination. It's gonna it's gonna get in there. It's gonna give it a little meat breakdown, and then it's gonna have a nice thick coating that we can put this batter in. This piece right here, I'm gonna be honest with you, um, may not be that edible. I mean, I'm sure it's edible, but it's not like the prize piece. It's, it's the mid piece, it's got some backbone in there. Uh, I, cut, I cut the ribs and the rib fat off of it, but there's a whole, not a whole lot of meat. And if you look closely, which you're not, because I don't have my other camera guy here with the zoom lens, but that buttermilk is sticking to it. Good. Buttermilk, bam. I wish I had a cooking show. <laughs> I really enjoy it. I'm all watching. wild game, all wild game, wild catches. Okay, we're gonna zip this up. If you stand there and watch, you have to eat it. It's the rules. Okay, then I'm leaving. <laughs> shake it up, shake it up. Ooh, that is fun to do. Let's go over here to the grease. I'm gonna show you the coating that's on here now, and we're gonna drop them in the hotness. There's an age old question out there. How do you know when your grease is hot because it doesn't boil like water. It's not as, uh, I was just gonna make up the word vigoral. That's not a word. I don't know where I got that. What you do is you take some flour. Oh, the sizzle, the sizzle is there. Okay, it's ready. It's ready! Breaded so nicely. Let's just pull out an arm here. The coating is awesome. Thank you, buttermilk. Now let's get some sizzle. This is gonna have a good color to it too. Big metal piece in there. Yeah, baby. Little dangle there. Before I drop it in the hot stuff. There we go. Okay. These are not totally suspended in the grease. Just want to point out. But I am going to wait until uh, they start to float up a little bit. Flip them, and as soon as they're floating on their own, they should be totally done.
Doing good, y'all. Doing good. I just like a little Kentucky Fried Chicken up in here. Except it is a backyard buttermilk squirrel, baby. I like the way that rolls off the tongue. Backyard buttermilk squirrel. Yeah, that might even be the title of this video. It's so good, Amy's coming in. Check She's it out. She's like, I want to know. I want to know what that buttermilk squirrel is like. On? It's time to pull them off. This is the moment of truth right here. Backyard buttermilk squirrel. Earlier this morning, this critter was uh, was tearing up my bird feeder. Now, it's on a plate, about to go into my mouth. Normally, I would uh, pair this with a frosty adult beverage of my choosing, but I have laid off uh, drinking for about a month and a half now. Uh, I'm trying to pure my purification. How do you say that? I'm trying to purify myself in every way possible before I head to New Zealand. So now we will enjoy without the beer. I'm very impressed with the coating. I can see a couple of hairs in there, but with all this, uh, this great flavor, I don't think it's gonna be a problem. Hopefully this isn't still super hot. It's still chewy, but man, that flavor is off the chain. And unlike the last squirrel, I can actually bite through this one and chew it. That just tastes like a tougher hot wing. Like the like the darker part of the chicken. Mm. Okay. Much, much better. This go around, y'all. Much, much better. Two factors I think are going on here. Literally the squirrel's better. And then the uh, the way we cooked it, much, much better. One note, if you do snap the bones like I did with the edge of the knife, might get a little spur off the bone, a little sharp angle. Watch out for that when you're putting your mouth on it. This needs no dipping sauce. The only thing that might make it better is a good old country gravy, like a spicy country gravy that you could put on it. But I already had biscuits and gravy this morning. This makes me want to uh, actually go on a legit squirrel hunt and get a bunch of them. Okay, I now know how to cook these. And the cleaning method I used was way better as well. So just better on all fronts, man. Y'all, if you've got squirrel around you and you want to give it a try, do this recipe right here. You're not going to be disappointed. Uh, I'll leave links down below for the recipe stuff and, and things I used. Uh, and if you want to check out the, uh, the air rifle, um, those are super efficient. I've got that set on the, uh, the lowest setting. So it's, um, you know, it's, it's not a BB gun, but it's not, it's not like a, a super high powered setting and it's perfect for this right here. If you got a rodent problem in your backyard, I highly recommend one of them. Okay y'all, I'm gonna enjoy the rest of these golden crispies right here. And I hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure to go ahead and give it a double smash on the like button. Don't, don't, don't like double hit it where it goes thumbs down. Just, just hit it one hard time for a good thumbs up. Click all the things, you know, subscribe as well, uh, that usually helps. I think the next time I see y'all, we're not gonna be hunting small game. We're gonna be hunting some crazy stuff in a crazy place. So you wanna stay tuned for that. I love you guys, thanks for being here for all these videos, and I will see you right back here on the next one.